Good morning, YouTube. I am the bear of bearindependent.com, the Oso Independiente, and this is the Prepper Classroom. Today, we're gonna talk about tools. One of y'all made the suggestion in one of the previous videos about, hey bear, why don't you write a little bit on the whiteboard first before you get started so we don't have to watch you writing all the time? Ish, thank you, question mark. So we've been working our way down this list that we made the last time. And by the way, if you're new, go back, go to this channel, Bear Independent, and uh, click the playlists and you'll find the Prepper Classroom playlist. In fact, we just recently on a Tactical Tuesday live stream, somebody said, hey man, how can I find out like where to start, man? Cause I'm like a brand new Prepper, man. <laughs> prepper Classroom, start there, okay? So, we're working our way down this list. We did food, we did water, now we're on tools. So let's talk about tools. We'll come over here to this whiteboard a little bit. Get out your uh, prepper notebooks, your little journals, your legal pads, whatever, you know, your, your slate and your chisel, whatever, whatever you're doing, get that out. <clears throat> tools. The tool, the tool that most preppers will focus on. The vast majority, especially the box checker mentality preppers, the people who are like, oh, I need this. Knife, check, check, got my knife. That is the tool that most people will harp on, the knife. And more or less rightfully so. Knives tend to be the number one tools that we interface with our environment with. So on a knife, we'll go here. Most people, most preppers are like, yeah, man, I'm going to want a super tanto kukri bushcraft tomahawk so that I can get out there and I'm going to build me a log cabin for me and my sweetheart out there in the middle of the wilderness. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grow morels and uh, we're going to farm tilapia and we're just going to live independently off the grid. To which I generally say, cool story, bro. If you could do that, you would already be doing it. No, you don't understand, man. When the balloon sets up, goes up, it's going to reset this whole system and we're going to be survivalists out there in the middle of nowhere. To which I say, okay, shouldn't you practice for that? No, man, I'll be fine. You'll be a corpse is what you'll be. So knife. We want a three quarter tang or full Tang. Now, let's see if I can do a terrible drawing. A three-quarter tang. Here's our knife. See, it looks very dangerous. Looks like a pirate knife. Okay. The metal here, the tang, is the piece that goes into the handle. So we want either a three-quarter tang like this, or we want it to extend all the way down here, <clears throat> all the way through the handle. That makes it very robust. The reason you want it robust is so that you can do things with it. Like, Don't you love it when you're in the middle of shooting a video and then you get interrupted? It's the best. Regroup, move on. All right, knife, full tang, okay? Because you're gonna, you wanna chop with it. Knives are not chopping tools, they're cutting tools. But, well, if I had to, yes, if you had to, uh, but less than ideal. But you do want three quarter or full tang for things like batoning, for firewood processing, and just because it adds to the integrity of the knife. See, we have this structure that comes all the way back here through the handle, that's good. And then some knives, this extends past the end of the knife and you can use that as a hammer or as a striking tool in self-defense or whatever. And so, and. The main reason I include three-quarter tang here is because of the Mora knife. Mora knife, M-O-R-A-K-N-I-V, Mora knife. It is possibly the best $15 you can spend on a knife ever. I have a literal dozen of them, possibly more, 
They are in my systems everywhere. If I'm going to carry a light knife and a heavy knife or a light knife and a hatchet or something like that, I'm taking a Mora, hands down. Now, and we're not talking EDC. EDC is a whole nother thing. In fact, we're even gonna put EDC on this board over here so that we don't forget it, okay? But EDC, Spider Co, baby, don't make me stick you. Or tactically open packages from Amazon, right? Because that's what most people are doing with their EDC knife is they're opening packages with it. Um, maybe, you know, spreading peanut butter or picking something out of their finger. But very rarely the, the utility that they select the knife on, which is like, if I had to, if I'm in a fight and I got to stab and slash people and capture wrists with my knife. Yeah, okay, Todd, cool. It's great. You been to any classes lately? No, but I watched some internet videos. Cool, buy the $300 knife. That'll make you an operator. Good job. So three quarter tank because of the Mora knife, okay? Otherwise, full tang, baby. And what would we be looking at there? Um, man, there's lots of them. I like Ontario Knife Company. The K bar is just famous for all the right reasons. It's a great knife. Um, let's see. Essie makes phenomenal knives. You're going to spend for it. I find OKC, Ontario Knife Company, to be a more affordable but extremely high quality version of SE knives. Um, and I have several OKC knives and would I bet my life on them? They are the first line of defense in my critical systems is Ontario Knife Company knives. Uh, and this would be the RAT 3, RAT 5, and the RTAC 2. I have all of these knives and I love them. Uh, SE6 is a phenomenal knife as well. These I have, oh, 12 plus, question mark. And let's see, who else makes good knives? Gerber, they're higher end knives. That would be like the, the Gerber Strong Arm, the Gerber, Gerber LMF, um, LMF or strong arm. With Gerber, you're looking for their knives that are made in um, the United States, not their knives that are made in China. I have broken while batoning a Gerber Profile and a Gerber Big Rock, both of which are about 20, 25 bucks at Walmart, which I bought because they were 20 or 25 bucks at Walmart. And I was like, let's give these things a shot and see what happens. Um, yeah, they just don't, and they don't come with a very impressive edge either, and most of y'all aren't very good at sharpening. So here's this. Copy this down or take a screenshot because we're about to make this go away. Got it? I ain't going to tell you again. All right. Now, next. We're gonna make a star over here because we need to talk about sharpening. Okay, next, let's talk about axes. I have all the axes. They are tremendous, believe me. Now, you can go with your typical hardware store. Store axe, hardware store axe. This is gonna to need to be sharpened for sure. If you don't know how to sharpen axes, you need to look up the draw file method. That was a post on Patreon many moons ago that I did. Okay, so the draw file method for sharpening axes for sure. Your hardware store axe is not gonna be very sharp or and it's not gonna have very crisp lines. Um, they're mass produced, but they will get the job done because you're talking a $25 axe, not a $250 axe. Um, now in between here, there's gonna be like, say for example, North Point Axe, um, who full disclosure, they sent us an axe, no charge, 
it's a phenomenal axe, and there's no charge for me saying that. We're just brothers helping brothers out. Excellent axe. They've also made axes for the Revolting Man. So if you're not subscribed to the Revolting Man channel, you should be. Um, but you should consider North Point Axe because they're going to fall quality-wise over here when you look at something like a Gransfer's Brooks. These guys are spendy. Very, very spendy, but they're excellent axes. Um, these guys over here, and if you want a price that's going to trend closer to the hardware store, but a quality that's going to trend closer to one of these custom handmade Swedish axes, North Point Axe and other several other axe producers, you know, small axe producers, will fall right here in the middle. That's been my experience. But yeah, North Point Axe, can't say enough nice things about them. That being said, all of these are gonna to need to be sharpened. So understand the draw file method and have files on hand. And files, by the way, do not live in perpetuity. If you have an old dull file, get rid of it, which means you should have several of them. Why do we have axes or hatchets or even very large knives like the Ontario Knife Company Artac 2? Because we're not chopping with our little tiny knife. I'm not taking this knife and trying to bushcraft me a homestead. Not happening, right? So you want a larger ax so you can use your whole body to get into it. Even a hatchet, just for processing firewood, a hatchet goes a long way. Um, so I'm a big proponent of having a larger cutting tool, either a big knife or a small ax with me, and then a smaller knife for doing things like preparing food, skinning game, um, making bushcrafting toggles for all my traps or whatever, right? For the detail work. Trying to find the sweet spot in there for one knife or one ax to rule them all is, it can be done, but it's not generally well done. It's like saying I want an AR-15 to shoot from zero to 500 meters. It can be done, but most people can't pull it off. So, axes. Then we get back to sharpening, and then we're gonna cruise from there. Okay, because we're taking some time here. Uh, sharpening, so this is gonna be files and whetstones. Okay, if you don't know how to use a whetstone, get one and practice with it. Learn how to do it. Same thing with files, again, research the draw file method. Okay, uh, I'm telling you, if you've ever sharpened an ax before with push filing, and it can be done. I can make axes sharp enough to shave with, with a push file. Research the draw file method. That's how I sharpen all my axes. And I was actually taught that by an 80 some year old Austrian logger. I was like, yeah, this guy knows his stuff. So you need a way to keep these things sharp. Um, and you need to know how to do it now. You need to actually do it. About once every 60 days or so, I will take my whetstone, set it in my sink overnight um, in water, and then I will pull it out the next morning and just sharpen every knife that we have that's been in service. Now, we have way too many knives. In fact, I get a lot of uh, emails where like, Bear, can I send you a knife for review? And I'm like, if one more knife shows up around here, my wife is gonna stick it through my throat because we have that many knives. Um, but uh, any knives that have been used, uh, like our butchering knives, our kitchen knives, my EDC knives, knives that are on my kit, I'll go through and I usually end up with at least a dozen knives and I'll sharpen all of them one shot. And my, my benchmark for sharp is if I can shave hair off the back of my hand. In fact, stand by. If I can take a knife like this, and do that with it, then we have a sharp knife, okay? So if your knife can't do that, you don't have a knife, you don't have a tool, you have a toy. So keep your knives sharp, okay? And understand how to make them sharp. Otherwise, why bother? Um, and again, this is not something you're gonna figure out on the worst day of your life when you decide you need to sharpen your knife. 
um, in the middle of the apocalypse. And also understand, like, when I'm butchering, I keep a stone right next to me while I'm working. Because I'm, I'm, my, my main knife, I may have to go back through and sharpen that sucker three or four times just in the middle of processing one medium to large animal. Or it's about once per turkey, cutting up a turkey, I want to go back and touch up that edge because I don't want to be putting lots of undue pressure on that knife and have it slip and, oh, now I've got a huge laceration that we got to deal with. Sharp knives are the bomb. Okay, so cutting tools, digging tools. How do we get a black marker? What's going on here? Well, we'll stick with it. Digging tools. This is going to be simple. Either an E tool on your kit, and again, the revolting man keeps popping up. He got on to me, he's like, Bear, you're cool and all, but as a Marine, I just can't understand, not me, him. He's like, as a Marine, I just can't understand why you don't have an E-tool on your kit. I'm like, well, because they catch on everything and they flop around all over the place when you're walking. Uh, but yeah, yeah, got it. So E-tool, entrenching tool. That's a little foldy uppy shovel that you dig ditches with, make cat holes with the whole nine. Um, you can use a little garden spade or garden trowel, right? For digging cat holes, what's a cat hole? That's the hole that you're going to poop in out there when you're bushcrafting in the wilderness. Um, and then shovels. And again, this can be a, I like a five foot shovel and I like a flat shovel and a spade shovel because for different things, transferring material, a flat shovel is way better. And for digging holes, you're not digging a hole with a flat shovel unless you're in like mud or sand, um, but a spade, the pointy shovel, okay? And then you can, uh, in, in a lot of units, they'll take full-size shovels and just cut the handle down so you end up with something that's about this long. Uh, and they make short handle shovels as well, but as far as having tools around to dig holes with, and then uh, digging bars, digging bars. These are gonna be like for rocks and whatever else. But yeah, you need something, you know, this is, E-tool or garden trowel is gonna be the kind of thing that you carry with you in your line three on your kit um, for making holes in the field. You know, digging fighting positions, digging latrines, making cat holes, so forth and so on. Uh, digging tools, your shovels and digging bars are gonna be the kinds of things that you have around your house or your homestead for general maintenance or digging latrines, um, making fighting positions, so forth and so on, okay? Construction tools. Um, let's just go with basic hand tools, just to start. Basic hand tools. Um, hammer, plus nails. Um, and this is not something that I want you carrying around with you on your person. This is gonna be a shelter in place, homestead type scenario. Uh, hammer and nails, screwdrivers, Pliers. You can have a, uh, a drill, battery, battery operated drills and impact drivers are the bomb, as long as you have a way to keep them recharged, okay? So, but basic hand tools, saws, hand saws. Um, what about a brace and bit, the old sawdust pump? You ever use one of those? Brace and bits. Hammer and nails, screwdrivers, pliers, hand saws, bracing bits. Um, with enough manpower, we can build anything with these. We really can. Uh, something that a lot of people would probably turn their nose up at because in an SHTF environment, all that noise is going to give you away. Cool. But if there's 150 of us and 30 of us are all on security, uh, maybe that's uh, maybe we roll those dice, right? chainsaws, and then this is also bars, chains, oil, two cycle, oil, bar, fuel, files, filters, plugs, Okay, so it's not just the chainsaw. It's everything that goes with the chainsaw as well. By the way, chainsaws don't have blades. Little known fact, chainsaws don't have blades. 
they have a, let's see, let's do more bad art with T. So let's see, here's our, the rumbly part right here. And this is the handily part, the little trigger. And then this part here, this is the bar. And the, this part here, this part, that's the chain. No, no blade. Not nowhere on this thing is a blade. So just something to consider. Now you know. Moving on. Basic hand, or I'm sorry, construction tools. Start with basic hand tools and maybe build out from there. And know how to use them. Something that uh, my wife and I have been talking about a lot lately is that the local um, community colleges in our area released their um, curricula. And there's a lot of very low cost and free courses that are awesome. Canning, gardening, animal husbandry, basic um, construction. One, one of them is um, how, to get, how to win more contracts by marketing to the federal government. I'm like, interesting, right? They have a broad range of things, including construction, woodworking, um, welding. One of them was welding. One of them was intro to plumbing. They're, they're free. So check your local colleges and see what's out there, free or low court low cost courses for you to take construction tools cooking tools cooking you need a stove plus fuel how much fuel lots of fuel so and again bug out versus bugging in play or bugging in sheltering in place Bugging out, your stove might be a little tri trioxane tablet stove or a little um, compressed gas stove or whatever. Or it might just be, um, you might just make a little fire, right? And have a little grate that sits over your fire to heat your water with, whatever, right? So there's that aspect of it. And then there's the, we have a homestead we're sheltering in place, okay? We just recently did a mission in Muskogee where we, not we, Oki and Vicky, who are totally BA fed, I don't know, two to three dozen people consistently for three days off of one grill. And that grill was running almost nonstop. If it wasn't cooking, it was being cleaned so it could cook the next meal. One propane grill. Oh, and one large turkey fryer burner. So those two things, as long as you have lots of propane, will work. But then what are you doing after you run out of propane? Like, I like getting charcoal grills, and then if you had to, inside of that grill where the charcoal would go, you can build a wood fire. You, you can make your own charcoal as well, but that's a different topic for a different time. So, cooking, right? The stove and lots of fuel. And then you need pots and pans. Again, are you carrying this stuff on your back? Because if you are, I don't want a 14-inch cast iron skillet. I want a little tiny cook pot. But if we're not carrying it on our back, I want that 14 inch cast iron skillet. I want, I want all of the Dutch ovens, all of them. No jokes, everybody. All right, so what are your pots and pans? Utensils for cooking plus eating and then clean up. One of the things that I prep, because I love having it available, is tin foil. You line a pan with tin foil, you're good to go. You can wrap a meal in tin foil and keep it for a while. You can do lots of things with tin foil. So just friendly reminder, get some tin foil. But you're cooking, you know, a stove and a way to feed it, pots and pans, utensils for eating and for cooking, and a way to clean it all up again. Things to consider, right? We go medical tools and it's broad strokes. So fax and blowout kits, which we will talk about at another time. Um, what about sutures? And this is going to be hemostats. Um, scalpels, the 
pliery things that I can't remember what they're called that aren't hemostats but something else. Uh, medical tools. This could be bone saws, uh, syringes, and needles. There are several online veterinary supplies that you can get all this stuff without a prescription. And there are several feed stores that will sell you all this stuff without prescriptions or any kind of documentation, especially in this neighborhood right here. Um, and sutures you can get pretty much, you can get sutures on Amazon. So uh, what kind of medical tools are you gonna have? Have them on hand. Ideally, you know how to use them, but hey, if you have them and you don't know how to use them, maybe somebody will come by that you do know how, that does know how to use them. Cruising. Lighting. This is something a lot of people miss. Lighting. How are we going to see? Or, or, and B. So, we have lots of oil lamps plus oil. How much oil? All the oil. Candles. And this is everything from the little tiny tea lights to the big, I think they're uh, 120 hour candles. And they, they make 240 hour candles as well. So we have everything from the little tiny tea lights, which by the way, if you have a stubborn fire, a tea light will help. And I actually keep some tea lights in some of my fire kits, especially for my kids' fire kits, that if they are, you know, if they're in an E and E situation or uh, whatever, and they got to build a fire and they're having a hard time, light that candle with their big lighter, pile their stuff on top of it, and they will get a fire going. So little tea lights for that. Candles. Um, what about uh, lanterns? Lanterns plus all the fuel. All of it. Okay. Um, you could do fire, assuming you knew how to write, fire and torches, but you know, fire and torches. I don't wanna go that far back in the stone age if there's a reset button, but you could do it. What about um, clear and night vision? Now, that's a question, that's an entirely different concept. We just shot a video about that on Patreon. Uh, but basically, it is absolutely force multiplication. If I can see in the dark and you can't, guess who's going to win that fight? Especially if I punch you in the mouth first. Literally, figuratively, you know, or from 500 meters away. So, yeah, lighting. How are you going to see? Flashlights. Flashlights. Headlamps. And then this is batteries. How many batteries? All the batteries. What about rechargeable batteries? Yep. How are you going to recharge them? Think about it. We have lots of rechargeable batteries. Frankly, they're not near as good as copper tops. But we do have ways to recharge them. They just don't last as long. Okay. And then lastly, cruising along. We're going to go over here to self-care. Self-care. And this is going to be things like toothbrush. Um, toothbrush, uh, toothpaste, and floss. That's what I'm looking for. That's the word. Floss. Um, how about nail clippers? Again, a sharp knife here. Sharp knife plus tweezers for removing foreign objects. Forceps is that other word I was looking for earlier. Forceps. Not plier things that are medical. Forceps. Um, maybe you get a pumice stone and you can get all the rough skin off of the bottom of your feet. I don't know. Whatever. Like whatever you're into. Um, and then whatever you need. If you have any like special conditions that these are the things that I have to need, that's self-care. What do you need to self-perpetuate? That would fall into over here. And that would be additional. Whatever you need. 
whatever you need. So, again, the idea behind these videos is not that we take a super deep dive on each individual thing. What kind of forceps, T? Well, I like Turkish, Turkish maids ones that are black with the rubberized handles because those are the best and I can Let's get that tooth out of there, ah, right? No, like this video, these videos are not designed to do that. These are broad overview to try and help break down concepts for people who are brand new to this kind of stuff. And then as a review process for people who aren't brand new to this kind of stuff. I mean, it makes me think, and I'm just pulling these things off the top of my head. So as always, if you have something productive to add to the conversation, put it down below. If you're new here and you want to stick around, hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon. If you're not new here and you've noticed that for whatever reason the YouTube algorithm is in fact egregious and has unsubbed you, I don't do that. They do. That's a whole nother video for another time. Please resubscribe. Um, and you can always email us. The email's down in the description. And uh, please consider coming to see us on Patreon. Patreon is the economic engine that supports all of the things that we do. We bring this content to you for free because our patrons patronize us over at Patreon, where there are 24 distinct pieces of content a month, uh, including six, six live streams a month. So, yeah. Bless y'all. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day and share this around to all your new prepper friends. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Shalom, y'all.